when we're thinking about oh you could imagine on a on a beautiful moonless starry night uh, far away from the cities you can see the milky way you can see all these beautiful stars and you can stand there and you can ponder about you know how insignificant we are and, and how large the universe is and how amazing all that sort of stuff is and that is being in awe you're you're in awe of looking at the whole universe Now here, we're looking at the fundamental fabric of reality. We're looking at the very fundamental laws that govern everything from galaxies to the internal organs of our body and our cells and the, you know, the way our lungs split in nature, the way uh, coral reefs form, the way urchins look, the, 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 the spirals of an, of an octopus tentacle. All these sort of very, very complex things that have very basic origin. My name is Julius Horsthuis and I'm a fractal artist. Fractals are mathematical functions. When you run them through a computer, you get these otherworldly, very complex looking shapes. Geometric Properties features the artwork of the fractal artist Julius Horsthuis. Arctic House uh, worked with him to bring his fractal art to a whole new level on a technological scale and combined that main experience with interactive installations that allow our visitors to understand the concept of fractals. Even a few decades ago, they were just mathematical functions. They were letters and numbers on a page and something that people could conceptualize but they couldn't see. So at Arctic House, we were very proud to work with him to bring that kind of experience to our audience on an unprecedented scale. So whereas a painter or a sculptor would start their art with a simple idea, maybe a sketch, fractal art really isn't like that. The fractal artist is much more like a photographer or a cinematographer, even though they're not really physically traveling, they're sort of traveling through these mathematical landscapes using software. It is an incredible amount of calculation power uh, that you need. So I have this render farm in my studio that has been rendering this exhibition for over a year. Artec House New York, this is the, the best place for fractals to live. Normally I'm making a fractal, it's something you look at, I make it on a screen. It's not a place that you're finding yourself within. hope that what this result is, it's really about being there and feeling what it's like to be there. And then you have your music. Music is extremely important. My name is Jesse Stevens, and I'm the sound designer and engineer for Geometric Properties here at Arctic House. We're using the Elisa technology to mix this in 3D. So we have a 30.1 system, so 30 channels and a subwoofer channel. And we're able to take all the sound objects from the score and the sound effects and place them and move them throughout the space. So people standing in one spot will hear the sound mix from that location. But as they move around, just like their relationship to watching the visuals changes on their perspective, the audio perspective changes as well. It's going to be a head spinning, immersive journey through sound and space. The whole different world when it comes to immersive entertainment. The, the fractals almost dictate what needs to be heard. The, the music is, is a big part of this. It needs to match perfectly and beautifully and just, just enhance it and, and make it feel cohesive and, and immersive. Julius is using two pieces that I had composed for planetarium shows. You know, I guess the music fit what he's doing very well. I mean, I've seen it and it seems like I wrote the music for his installation. To me, it's a, it's a wonderful time to be a composer or artist. Um, because we have these digital tools, they open up you know, whole vistas which we hadn't been able to explore before. A project like this is, is very unique. This is uh, one of our biggest projects um, in terms of the amount of cameras used to put in a camera-based calibration system for the warping and the blending of the projectors. And then also for the pixel space. 
Uh, this is 18 4K projectors. And so that's uh, quite a bit of amount of pixels. We calculated about 1.6 megapixels. What's so unique about our tech house is, is the immersion of it. There's so much projection and it's all around you. And so this is what really excites us. The best thing to hear is, how did they do that? How, how did they make that happen? I, there's so many projectors up there. How do they make that look like one image going all the way across? And that's one of the best compliments that someone's gonna give you. House is more than just a physical space for the arts. Arctic House is a team. When we work with artists, it is very much a collaborative process. Our Arctic House creative team wanted to give our audience additional installations that will help them explore this concept of fractals in a more intimate way. On the mezzanine level, there are three circular artworks. The beautiful part is that there's more than meets the eye. So using our Arctic House Extended Reality app, visitors, if they point the device at these artworks, they will see them come alive. You are no longer standing in front of an artwork. It invites you to move around it. It invites you to get closer to it. The interactivity changes the traditional role of art in a physical space. One of the main features in the mezzanine gallery is the Fractal Lab. This has six different screens, each which has its own three-dimensional fractal with a different formula. It also lets you as the kind of viewer walk up to one of these screens and interact with the actual parameters of the formula. It should be a nice kind of connection for people to make where you can like immerse yourself in the main space, but then also go and explore these on your own and have a little more agency as far as like, oh, this is like a really interesting form that I discovered in this formula, right? The beauty of it is just being able to sort of have like a stylized approach to manipulating a fractal. The other piece that I'm working on accompanies a set of folded origami works by Ray Champ. My goal with creating a media piece to accompany his works was to try to not only create something that um, got at this idea of iteration and self-similarity, but also accompanied the aesthetics and like the quality of his folded works. Basically using folding patterns as the source for various fractal tessellation. Your position in the space actually like will influence the, the tiling and fractal parameters. Paper folding is like another way that you can bring sort of math and geometry into like the real world. The creases in the work are related to each other. There's iterative sets of creases that build off of all the previous ones. Fractals were this pure mathematical concept for a long time. And then these researchers in like the 80s basically saying, well, we could use these self-similar patterns to look at coastlines and trees and even like the stock market. There's some really beautiful complexity to it. In, in, and those are things that you find in nature, but also it's a way with technology and math to kind of approach that beauty. It's a pretty fascinating way of making visual art. Often people think of mathematics or science as something unrelated to the arts, as something that is opposite. But here at Arctic House, we exist at the intersection of arts and science and mathematics and all of these different fields, and that's where innovation happens. We're thrilled to explore this mathematical concept and present it to our audience in an audiovisual immersive art installation. The first five minutes are just very dark. We're in this place that we're maybe in in real life. And then we're suddenly finding ourselves in nature. Uh, just being completely in nature and being at harmony in nature. That is something that every human being, I think, feels very deeply inside 
is a very positive thing. These fractals and this sort of natural place also reminds us of our origins. The second part was sort of exploring more like architectural principles. Obviously, architects have used fractals as well because we are so attuned to them. Specifically, when we're looking at architecture, we're looking at places of worship. We're looking at cathedrals, churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, um, because these places, they were built in order to inspire awe, in order to inspire in us the sense of being part of a larger whole. We're doing we're doing, you know, a 21st century fractal representation of it. But I think the function would be the same. It's a place of healing. And then the very final part of it, we're sort of thrown light years away into space. If there is anything like alien life on other galaxies or other planets, we don't know anything about that, but what we do know is that the fundamental language of nature, the fundamentals of mathematics, they would still apply there. They would still apply on other planets, they would still apply on other dimensions. You could literally think like, okay, if there is, you know, alien life, or if there is an, you know, an hereafter or something, it's not very far-fetched to think that it could be something like that. There is a pattern and a connection in this world and we are all connected and there is something that we share amongst ourselves. There is something that we share with other things in nature and even this planet as a whole, there is this grand pattern and we are all a part of it. And it's something beautiful and unifying that at Arctic House we wanted to share with everybody during this time because it's easy to feel isolated uh, when we're far away from each other, but we are all connected. The key feature of awe is that it quiets self-interest and makes you feel part of the larger whole. I think that is something that maybe now more than ever we really need.